I am here to do a teaching that my personal Heavenly Saviour, the Lord of Jesus Christ, has told me to teach and preach about. And the Holy Ghost gets all the glory for what he uses my tongue to preach his word. And so I thank the Lord, the Holy Ghost, for helping me to be able to teach the word of God, preach the word of God, and to expose error where, wherever error is. There's a lot of error out there in the world. And in this teaching, preaching, the Holy Spirit will be showing us from his word the truth. And if you're a true born again Christian believer and you've tuned in to this teaching, preaching, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8 from the King James Holy Bible. You must read it from the King James Holy Bible. You say, why now? Well, the King James Holy Bible is the only Holy Bible from the original Greek and the original Hebrew. That's why. And so I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8, King James Version, KJV. Charity never faileth, but whether, whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So, let's look at that scripture carefully. I'm going to expose error wherever it's, where, wherever it's at. And basically, you'll have false teachers and false prophets who profess to be Christians, they will, they will get you to go to this scripture. And they'll say, see, because prophecies they shall fail, there's no true prophets of today. That's error. Spiritual error. And it's wrong to say there are no true prophets of today. Why? Um, the Holy Ghost will be pointing this out for us. And I thank him for doing that. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for helping me to point out the truth and error. Okay, let's look out the word prophecies in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. You notice it says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8, the words, there be prophecies, they shall fail. So what prophecies can you think of that fails? It can't be true prophecies. It has to be false prophecies. So is this scripture indicating that false prophecies do fail? Yes. Yes. Does it indicate that true prophecies will fail? And the answer is no. Why? Because true prophecies can't fail. You say, where's that in the Bible, Dan? Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. And let's go to verse... Six to verse seven. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, saying, "And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom." 
and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. Now, Jesus prophesied of wars. So, when Jesus prophesies of those things that he quoted in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to verse 7, do they cease? No. So that's a continual thing. Wars will always happen. Will always. So to those false prophets out there and those false teachers out there, false apostles and false evangelists and false pastors and false teachers, you can't be going around deceiving people. It's wrong. You can't say... There are no true prophets of today because you're, slapping, you're trying to slap Jesus in the face. He's the greatest prophet of all time. He prophesied there shall be wars. Yeah, let's, let's read that scripture again. The, the scriptures uh, in Ma the gospel, that gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to verse 7. And yes, shall hear of wars and rumours of wars, say that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in divers places divers places so basically what false teachers and false prophets will do is they'll say there are no true prophets of today there are no true apostles of today and they will discredit Jesus and because Jesus prophesied many things there are still wars there are wars terrorism as a form of war. So Jesus predicted that, prophesied that. And so, but yet that's still coming to pass today. So, I mean, it's not logical to say that there are no true prophets of today. Why? Because prophecies are being fulfilled in our generation and for our next generation onwards for all eternity. You can't... Wars, <coughs> wars will continue to happen on certain occasions. And so... That shuts down the whole argument of the false teachers teaching and false prophets teaching that there are no true prophets of today. Now... Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So Jesus talks about false prophets too. And in Second Peter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who, P-R-I-V-I-L-Y, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that sports them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So the false teachers and false prophets will deny the Lord Jesus Christ, his teaching in his word of Matthew chapter 24 verse 6 to verse 7. They won't believe that there are going to be prophecies fulfilled that there are wars of today because they don't believe true prophets are of today which is basically devilish how the false prophets, false teachers try to say that there are no true prophets of today. So, discernment is a must in this world. We need to have the Holy Spirit, the, the discernment to be able to discern what is truth and what is error. Now, 
the thing is, is false prophets and false teachers will say, oh, uh, the reason why there are no true prophets of today is because all the prophecies and all that died out when the apostles died out. And does that mean that the disciples of Christ died out too? No, absolutely not. Uh, see how the false teachers and false prophets will also say that the apostles of Jesus, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, has died out. Because of that, you can't preach the gospel. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 28, the gospel of Matthew chapter 28, in verse 18 to verse 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, basically, the Lord Jesus Christ will be with his true born-again Christian believers always unto the end until he comes. So, Jesus said, you. He, said, he, he commands us to preach the gospel. Oh, but the false teachers will say, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to do that. Because all the disciples died out at that time. And when the disciples plus the true prophets and apostles died out at the time, you can't prophesy. This is what the false teachers say. You can't prophesy. You can't preach the gospel. <coughs> so, see how... The Holy Spirit has used in me to expose the false teachers and the false prophets. Now, let's turn to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16, verse 15 to verse 18 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, and is baptized it, shall be saved it. But he that believeth not, shall be damned it. And these signs shall follow them. That believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So in that verse 17, it's got tongues. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. You'll see the words tongues in that scripture. And in that scripture, it's got tongues, they shall cease. So when did tongues cease? Well, when we sleep of a night. When we wake up, we can pray in tongues. But we need interpreters to interpret the tongues. And so basically... Uh, False prophets and false teachers can't say that it's an eternal ceasing of tongues. And in that scripture it's got, Knowledge it shall vanish away. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. When does knowledge vanish away? When some unsated unbelievers die in their sins. So, in this scripture of 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8, it's got, Prophecies, they shall fail. You notice you never see it eternally fails for, like, true prophecies. It, it indicates to me that this is talking about false prophecies. False prophecies always fail. Always. The, 
proof and evidence of this is found in Deuterometry chapter 18 verse 20 to verse 22. We'll turn there. Turn to this one beautiful scripture. And I thank the Holy Spirit for cross-referencing scriptures for me. Okay, Deuterometry chapter 18 verse 20 to verse 22. King James Version, KJV. But the prophets which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. King James Version, KJV. And so, there you go. There you go. So, how do we know a false prophet? Well, whatever they say, and they prophesy, and they try and do it in the name of the Lord, if that don't come to pass, then we're not to be afraid of the false prophets. I'm not afraid of false prophets. Okay, let's, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and let's read in verse 9 to verse 13 now that he ascended it what is it but that he also descended it first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended, descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. To we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So, basically, God has given gifts. For a reason. Now, false prophets and false teachers will look out Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and say, Oh, the Apostle Paul said it, and then when he died, all oh, prophecies, true prophecies, and apostles have been done away. Now, the thing is, is I'm going to, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to point something out for us here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. You'll see evangelists and some pastors and teachers in that scripture. Now, do we need evangelists and some pastors and teachers of today? If you answer yes, then we need true prophets, apostles of today. Because in that same scripture, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, 
it's got apostles and some prophets. You can't change the word and you can't take away from the word of God. False prophets and false teachers, false evangelists, false pastors will take away apostles and some prophets from Ephesians 4 verse 11. And they'll even take away evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. And so basically, true born again Christian believers will believe that, well, evangelists are people that spread the gospel. And yes, Jesus commands us to still keep doing, preaching the gospel message. Now, that scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, it, it proves that there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers that are of today. Why? Because verse 12, Ephesians 4 verse 12 says for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ who is the body of Christ? us <laughs> it's us it's a continual thing why? because the S on the end of saints is a meaning all saints everywhere and so we see the body of Christ mentioned in that verse. So who's the body of Christ? It's us. It's the church. No, it's the true born again Christian believers when I mean us. So basically with the edifying of the body of Christ it's the true born again Christian believers. It's it's everywhere that more or less false prophets and false teachers can't go and say that there are no true prophets of today. And so in this is a warning to anyone thinking about believing that there are no true prophets of today. This is what the Holy Spirit warns us. Warns us, everyone. Revelation 22 verse 18 to verse 19 from the King James Version KJV. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his parts out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So, throughout my walk as a true born again Christian believer, with my personal Heavenly Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, I did not once believe that there are no true prophets of today, <coughs> even as a baby Christian. Why? Because as I kept reading the Word of God, the Holy Spirit kept enlightening the eyes of my understanding to believe that there are true prophets of today. Baby Christians have got what? The spiritual milk. And so spiritual milk will be uh, the Word of God. And basically we need the Word of God to grow spiritually. So let's turn to 1 John, 1 John 4 verse 1 to verse 6. Let's get this passage of scripture up, shall we? Okay, 1 John 4 verse 1 to verse 6. 
the Holy Spirit says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of they are of the world, therefore therefore speak they are speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. I'll read that scripture again. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us uh, sorry, heareth not us, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So I read that scripture again. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us, whereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, I just want to truly repent of all my fleshly sins. If, like, I've got your word wrong, I just want to truly repent of all my fleshly sins. Forgive me of all my fleshly sins, Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to be humble, teaching your word. Amen. So, let's go to... Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to verse 15. Let's pull this scripture up, shall we? This is a very important scripture. Second Corinthians 11 verse 13 to verse 15 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end it shall be according to their works. King James Version, KJV. So, basically... Satan's ministers, demons, can oppose to be like righteousness. They teach a bit of truth. It's righteousness. But they get revealed and their works get brought up. And so, basically, if they're... Once, well, because there are false prophets of today and false apostles, deceitful workers, there must be true prophets of today. And so, let's look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. So let's pull that scripture up, shall we? Revelation chapter 20, verse... Let's bring this scripture up. Okay, I'm bringing this scripture up. Revelation 20 verse 10, King James Version, KJV. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and it shall be torn torments it day and nights forever and ever. So you say, who are false prophets now? 
False prophets are Satanists. Satanists disguise into different areas. Mormonism, Joseph Smith, false prophet. Uh, and every false prophet that's mentioned in the Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon has a lot of false prophets. And so you got the witchcraft area, you got Wigan and Wigan uh, devilish, dangerous death cult. <coughs> and so basically we need the truth of what the Word of God says from the King James Holy Bible. So let's turn to Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. King James Version, KJV. So there will be a time when sound doctrine, this teaching that the Holy Spirit is wanting me to teach and preach, there will come a time when false prophets and false teachers will go looking for itching ears, people to itch, scratch their ears, and their own lusts, like deceitfulness. And so, basically, I'm trying to convince people that there are true prophets of today. Yes. And the Holy Spirit has done that. Now, Basically, this teaching can never be refuted by false teachers and false prophets. If anyone's got questions they want to ask, comment on the video underneath on the YouTube channel that I created for my personal heavenly Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. And you can also subscribe to this wonderful teaching that the Holy Spirit has told me to teach and preach. The wonderfulness of God's Word. You can also like the teaching that the Holy Spirit has told me to teach and preach. I'm not getting self-glory out of this teaching. I am giving all the glory and honour to my Heavenly Abba Father God, Jehovah. Christ Jesus, the Holy Ghost. And so what I wanting people to come to the realisation is that whatever you get taught in church, read from the King James Bible and pray about what you're being taught. You hear someone in a pulpit saying, oh, there are no true prophets of today. You don't automatically believe that. You go away, you write it down, you, you pray and you ask the Holy Spirit, is what that person's saying in the pulpit, is it true or false? The Holy Spirit would tell you, it is false. Why? Your, the Holy Spirit would get you, get you to go to His Word, and, and that's wonderful because when you pray to God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, God the Father in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit, will guide you through his holy words. It will always come through what the Word of God says. God will show you in dreams and visions too. He will show you through his word. And God's word cannot return void. It will always come back with something good. And so, the Holy Spirit, I thank, I thank you, Heavenly Father, God, God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, for helping me to be able to convince the hearts of people 
that there are true prophets of today and that it's only through your word that they will believe that there are true prophets of today and that I thank you the Holy Spirit for helping me to back up what I'm saying with your word so that your word will enlighten the eyes and the hearts of many souls so that they can believe the truth and the truth will make them free. Amen. And I'm going to finish this teaching and amen. Done.